Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're making this uh, little painting of a shack here. I think this turned out really nice, and I want to show you every step that I do to get to this final result. It's a full workflow tutorial. We're using uh, Photoshop. We're using Topaz products, uh, Impression, Simplify. We're using an older version of Simplify, Simplify called Simplify 4. So it'll be a nice little blast from the past. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're starting out with this image here. This is a stock image I got off of unsplash.com and um, we're gonna make a photo painting today and this is how we start out and this is what it's gonna look like when we're finished. Hopefully something like this. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different. I started by adding a little bit of Topaz Sharpen AI to this, so I'm not going to bore you with that because you've seen me do that many times. I picked a sky out that I thought would work nice from a sky collection I have. And uh, I just duplicated this Topaz Sharpen AI layer and put it up on top here. Now the next thing I want to do is mask out this sky. sky. I'm going to use Mask AI to do it. So what we need to do is add a layer mask right here. Because if you don't do this, when you bring the uh, masked image back into Photoshop, it'll just have the sky cut out. But I like to work with a layer mask, so put a layer mask on there first. It's a really good tip. All right, so now what we're going to do is come up to Filter and Topaz Labs. And I'm looking for Mask AI right here. And we'll launch Mask AI. This is a pretty simple sky to get rid of, and uh, I'm just going to use the uh, contrast um, feature inside of Mask AI. So the first thing we need to do is we're uh, working with the Compute Brush, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to click right here one time. I'm going to hold my Shift key down, Shift clicking. That draws like a straight line, and I'm just going to come over here this is easier I mean you could just use your mouse and paint across here but I just think this is a little bit faster and this is a simple little um, cutout job so let's just use the contrast uh, mask mode AI or contrast let's just try contrast and we'll uh, before we do that we have to fill the bottom portion in with green and that's the keep so we're going to use this keep bucket right here click on this and and then click and fill this in and the red is the remove and the blue is the compute section all right so let's just um, click compute mask and give it a second or two here and right there it is done it's just that simple and the other thing i want to do is come up to edge and let's just do a little bit of foreground recovery here that just cleans it up a little bit on the edge here a little bit maybe something like about there that looks pretty nice and let's just click apply and that'll launch us right back into Photoshop with our mask intact intact now if I option click this mask you can see it it's done a nice job if I wanted to I could uh, come up here and paint some of these areas here it missed a little bit here but I'm not too concerned about that but well let me just show you I would um, make sure I have a brush B for brush put your uh, mode in the overlay blend mode that way it it will um, just target the whites the highlighted areas or the dark areas depending which paint you're working on and it'll leave the neutral tones out and I'm painting with white paint so I'm just gonna paint down in here a little bit make sure I, my paint opacity is at 5% so let me just type 0 that puts it at 100% and I'm just gonna come along the edge here and just paint that in I don't think I really needed to do that but Let's do it anyway, and I'll show you how it works. Now, outside here, I can see there's a little bit of gray area here, so I'm going to type X and go to black paint and just paint that area right there. And that looks really good. Now, let's option click our mask again. You might be asking yourself the question, hey, Dave, why don't I see the sky that you have here on this layer showing through? Because uh, the eyeball is shut off. So let me just click that, and there's our sky, and there's our cutout, and it looks really good. Let's just, we could zoom into it and take a look at it. And I'm doing a photo painting here, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it looks really, really nice. So I think we're good to go. Let's pull this all together in that Shift, Option, Command, or Control, E. Just to pull it all together. Now we're going to run it into a Simplify program, a Topaz Simplify program. I'm coming up to Filter, and I'm coming to Topaz Labs. I'm going to show you something new today, actually something old, 
but I love the old Simplify 4 program from Topaz. I don't think you can get this anymore, but if you have it, I recommend using it because there's a lot of really cool features built right into here. I mean, they're pretty much all in Topaz Studio too, but they're in, you'll find them in different different filters but they're all grouped together inside of here like the there's an adjust in here there's an edges a curves tool just pretty much anything you need to work on an image to simplify it so first off let me hit the reset button because these old plugins they would always remember the last setting that you brought into them which is a nice feature sometimes if you just want to run a plugin and have the same adjustment twice so that's really cool so i, I do like that but I'm going to hit reset so we can start from scratch. Now I'm just going to take my simplify size up. I think simplify looks really pretty awesome on this image here. I love simplify. And I like to use simplify in conjunction with uh, Topaz Impression, the painting program. So I'm going to simplify first. But look at that sky back there. That looks really, really nice. Um, so... So there's a simplify size. Um, I'm not going to mess with the feature boost, or am I? Let me just pull it up a little bit, just to pop a little bit of features in there. Nah, I don't like that. I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to take the detail strength. I always like to use a little bit of detail with my simplify, just to bring back a little bit of extra detail in there. And I love what's happening to the sky. This sky is really beautiful back in here. Um, and let's turn on our edges right here and come into this edges by clicking it and I'm just going to pull up the edge strength a little bit I'm just gonna leave the color edges on you can see what it's doing here let me click this uh, edges off and on so you can see see it's adding a little bit of edges popping a little bit of extra details in there it looks like it's just strengthening up the edges but I think that's way too much I'm just gonna pull that back a little bit and let's click this right here here's the before the edges and here's the after edges before and after and I think that looks kind of nice and I, I like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and accept it by clicking OK and that'll bring us into Photoshop now this is a little bit slow it's old technology so it is slow I might just speed the video up here a little bit but it takes under a minute to come back in and we're back in Photoshop. I'm quite happy with the way this looks right here. So I'd like to maybe save this out as just the way it is. But I would add some dodging and burning to it. But if I wanted to experiment, and I really recommend that you do this. Because uh, experimentation is really good. And you never know what kind of results you're going to get. So in this tutorial, I want to add some impression on here. But what I'd like to do at this state is to come up to... Uh, image and come down and, and click on duplicate and that puts it in a new window and it asks you do you want to duplicate this sure I do okay and see I'm in a new window right here so I still I can click here here's this right where I left off and now I have a new duplicated image with all the layers intact and I can start from here let's go ahead and stamp a new layer above layer one and that shift option command E we're gonna need that because I'm gonna mask back in some of the original uh, simplify back into the painterly effect that I'm adding in impression. So let's come up here to filter and come to Topaz Studio 2. We'll launch it. And as soon as it comes up, we're going to come to add filter and come down to impression. And now in impression, first thing I want to do is pick a brush out here. So we're on type 1 by default. Let's go through some of these. And I believe I like type 03. I mean, but keep playing and, and click around and see what you like and I'm gonna go with typo 3 the next thing I always like to do is come the whole way down to the bottom and find texture and keep dragging down and come to the background type and click original that gets rid of those little white uh, flecks that are in the image from the canvas alright so I'm gonna come back up here I'm not gonna do too much here because I like it just the way it looks right now of course we could adjust our brush size and uh, first off, I always like to look at the number of strokes. So we're on medium by default. Let's click on low. We lose more detail in low. But depending on what you like, you may want the low. And let's try high. I'm going to choose high because I like that little extra bit of detail in there. In there. And now we can take our brush size. And if we move it to the right, we'll lose more details and get more painterly. And so we can also come to the left and reveal some 
of the original. It actually doesn't reveal, I shouldn't say, but it just re reduces the brush size, so it's a little more defined. But I just want to get a nice painterly type look in here, and I think I think somewhere right around there. It defaults at 50, and I'm at 53 now. Let's try. I think 58 looks pretty good. I'm really happy with that. And then we could come and adjust our paint volume and our paint opacity. Let me pull up the paint opacity a little bit. I don't think so. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to double click this, leave it at default. Actually, you have to double click the actual paint opacity, not the slider itself. And I'm going to just leave the paint volume where it is. Now let me drag it up. Okay, and you can see what it's doing. But depending what you like, but play around in here, okay? I'm going to double click paint volume and get it right back there. And I'm liking it right here, so I'm just going to say accept. And that will bring us back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. The next thing we want to do is add a layer mask. So come right here and click on this layer mask icon. And now we've added a reveal all white layer mask. Now we're going to get a brush, so type B to get your brush tool up. And we're painting on this white layer mask, so we want to make sure we're using black paint. So type X to get your black paint. Take your opacity down to about 20%. I'm going to reveal a little bit of the sky back in. Some of the simplified sky. Just at 20%, so it's only going to reveal a little bit of it in here. Okay. Every time you lift your brush and paint again, you'll add another 20%. Let's start out with that 20%. Let me option click the mask and you can see what I painted right there. See that right there? That's at 20%. So option click again. And how about the foreground here? Let's reveal a little bit of that four. Or this isn't foreground. Sorry. This is background. I'm going to reveal a little bit of this back in here just to pop a little bit of extra detail in here. And remember, every time I lift, I'm going to add another 20%. So. Let's click this, uh, shift click this uh, layer mask. So here's the before and there's the after. See, I'm just adding a little bit of detail in there. As I come forward, I'm going to add more detail. So now I'm going to hit these foreground trees here. And I'm going to hit them one more time. So that'll, that puts 40% right here. Now on the, on the super foreground, <laughs> is that a good word, super foreground? Not really. But there's 20%, there's 20%. Let me throw 20% here, 20% here. Make my brush bigger. And paint across here. Get 20% into here. Let's do another 20% here. Just to throw a little more detail to the front. Because on a painting like this, you want a lot of detail in the front. And you want it to get less and less detail as you go back. Now, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller here. And now I'm going to bump this up to, because I want a lot of detail in this uh, old shack. Because to me, it's the star of the show. So let's type the 5 key and put 50% in. And let's just put this in. I'm going to stay away from this area because I'm going to keep that consistent with the background. Okay. So I'm going to throw 50% in there. And again, every time I lift up and start painting again, I'm going to add another 50%. So I want most of that Simplify to come right back in here. Let's just paint that all back in. Because I want this barn to have some detail. If you overshot, just type X and just erase. Am I painting with the right paint? Nope, I'm painting with the wrong paint. X. 50%. bottom of the barn here. These grasses here can look a little sharper here. Let that all come back in. That'll look nice. Okay. Make sure I got it all in. Let's option click this mask so we can see. So it doesn't have to be perfect here. After all, it is a painting, right? And let me sample this color right here. Make sure I'm painting that in it the right amount. Okay, let's option click here. Now we're back in. Now let's shift click this layer mask before and after. Okay. So let's click the eyeball. So here's the simplify and here's the painterly on top of the simplify. Now if I felt I've overdone this shack here, and I don't think I did, I think it looks good. 
but first off let me let me add 50 percent to this part of the shack which i don't think i did and let me make sure i'm painting with black paint right now i'm painting with gray paint so type d for default type x to get your black back up and i am at 50 percent okay so right in there and if i wanted to take a little bit of that effect off the barn um type x and let's just go down to like 10 percent and make our brush a little bigger and we'll just take a little bit of that off of there Okay, we're almost done. I just want to pull this all together again. Stamp a new layer, shift option command, and E or control E. And then we're going to come back to filter. I'm going to come back to uh, Topaz Studio 2. I just want to add a little bit of detail to some areas of the image. And to do that, I'm going to go to add filter and precision detail. And we'll just pop some extra detail in here. So let's try the overall small detail. And I'm mainly looking at the barn, really. Maybe some of the foreground areas. Let's just bump a little bit of that in there. Let's try a little overall medium detail. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. I'm not, I'm not going to mess with the overall large detail. I always say that and then I try it anyway. Which is a good thing to do. And I might end up just adding a tiny little bit in there. I'm going to mask this in where I think I need it. I'm going to just come up here and click accept and that brings us back into Photoshop. Now let's put a hide all layer mask on here. So hold the option key down and click on the layer mask and that'll hide everything we've just done. And now we can paint it in just where we want it. I'm just studying the image a little bit and I'm thinking I'm going to have my brush at 20% making sure I'm painting with white paint on this layer on this black layer mask. I'm just going to add a little bit of detail back on these trees back in here. Just at 20%. Just pinpointing some trees back in here. Just so our eye will kind of wander back there a little bit. Okay, just a little bit of that. And maybe a little bit in the foreground here. And some of these, I don't know what you call these weeds here. Let's just call them weeds. Just a little bit in there. Maybe a little bit on our grasses up in here. And... Maybe a little bit on here. Just little areas of interest. Just pick some little spots out and have fun and really take your time and look it over. And now I'm going to, let me try 100%. So I'm going to type the zero key here. And now I'm on the barn itself or the shack. Let's call it a shack. I think it's a shack. I don't, I don't think it's a barn. Wouldn't you like to live in this little shack? It looks kind of inviting. Back in the day, it would have been really nice. But now it turns into a nice little shack painting. And just throw a little detail. So that makes us go, our eye go to the shack. These are all very important things. And I hope you're taking, taking note of all this. Because these are the kind of things that can really make your image sing. And I like to have fun with this kind of stuff. So let's click this eyeball here. Here's our before and here's our after. And I think that looks really nice. And if you felt you overdone it, just take your opacity, pull it off, and start to build it up slowly. But I like it. I'm leaving it at 100%. That looks cool. I'm going to get rid of this little piece of white right here. I think that looks stupid in the painting. I don't like it. I'm going to put a blank layer mask here. Get my healing brush tool. You know I love it. Type J for the healing brush tool. Make it a little bit bigger brush and just paint over this little section right here with the healing brush and it's fixed so that's taken care of let's pull the whole image together shift option command or control e and now we're going to do a little dodging and burning i really didn't have to do that to be honest with you but it's just something i do a lot so and now what we want to do is do a little bit of dodging and burning so i'm just going to use my tony kuiper action so i'm going to get my dodge tool here and right here and it gives you white paint as you can see it puts you in a gives you a blank layer in an overlay blend mode and right now my opacity is at 100 percent so let's change that to about 10 percent and i'm just going to look for some highlighted areas make sure you have a nice soft brush my hardness is at zero percent 
little small brush and let me just hit some highlights. This is very important to finish off your painting. Take your time and just hit little highlights and it'll really, as I say, make your painting sing. It'll make people want it. They'll want to buy it. So take your time and have fun. As I always say, play some music. Find some little highlights on the heel here, back here. Kiss a little bit of light across there. I am at 10%. You can uh, type 05 and that'll take you down to 5% because I, I don't want as much light up in here, but I just want to show a little bit of fun, a little bit of light hitting up in some of these areas in here. And just find the right little spots. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good there. Maybe let me hit my barn here. Every time I swipe my paint, I'm adding another 5%. So maybe under here a little bit. And just find some little areas where you think might, might help adding a little bit of light to them. We're painting with light here, and I think that is awesome. Now let's add a, do a burn layer. So I'm going to go to my Tony Kuiper Action right here. Click on this. That puts me in a soft light blend mode, and it gives me black paint, and I'm still painting with 5%. Let me type one, let's go to 10%, and let's just find some little shadow areas that we can throw in. Just to add a little bit of depth and dimension to our image here, especially up here in the foreground here. Add some shadows here. And look for areas that are already shadow areas and just emphasize those a little bit more. And every time you paint over it, you're adding another 10%. So look at a little bit darker. Okay. And again, have fun. Just looking for the little areas. And we might want to come back. And here I'm going to put my brush now at 0, 05 for 5%. And make sure you look here. Make sure it didn't go to 50%. Because then you'll be mad at me. And you'll say, oh my gosh, Dave, what are you telling me? Okay. And I'm just looking for some little shadow areas that I can... Darken up a little bit and add a little bit of depth and dimension. And again, every time you swipe over it, you're adding another 5%. And I think that's looking pretty good. Let's click on the burn layer eyeball. So here's with the burn. And let's click on the dodge eyeball. And here's with the dodge. And then what I like to do is put those in a group. So let's uh, burn is is uh, is on right now and or selected I should say and let's shift click the dodge layer and let's come down to the little group icon pop that in a group and let's just type dodge and burn. It's always good to name your layers. If as you'll notice at the beginning of this tutorial, I had all my layers named because I do like to do that. That way, if you need to go back, you can go back and. You'll know what's on each one of these layers. So let's turn the eyeball off of the dodge and burn layer. So there's without the dodge and burn, and that's with it. As you can see, it does add some depth and dimension. And I could have dodged and burned the sky up here a little bit too. And in fact, let's go ahead and do that. I forgot that. I don't want to forget that. So let's go to our burn layer. And my percentage is at 5%. So I'm just going to add a little bit of darken up some of the shadows up in certain strategic areas of the cloud. Okay, like across here. And I'll just find some spots that we want to darken up a little bit. And again, every time I swipe across, I'm adding another 5%. Now let's go to the dodge layer. Make sure you change your paint. So type X. And again, I'm only at... I'm only at 5%. So I just want to kiss a little bit of light up in here. Okay. And you can vary your brush size as you go along. And let's click on the dodge and burn layer again. Here's before and here's after. So there we go. I think we're completed here. I think I hit this area right here a little too much with light. So let's go to our burn layer. Uh, make sure you're on black paint, which I'm on black paint right now. And I'm still at 5% and I'm just going to paint over that a couple little times right in there just to darken that up a little bit. I didn't like that. All right. The only thing I want to do now is add a little vignette to this. So let's make sure we're on the dodge and burn group. 
Let's get a lasso tool. So type L for the lasso tool. Let's draw our loose selection around our image. Organically shaped. Less over here because it's light over there. Like so. I'm going to get my Tony Kuiper action because it's quick. Freehand vignette. And I'm going to accept the 330 pixels. That usually works out really nice. And let's click this eyeball before and after. But it just adds just a little vignette. And I don't want it to be real noticeable. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Maybe something like that. Let's click the eyeball on and off. Just to add just a little bit of vignetting. And now we're totally done. I missed one important step. And I... I'm not editing out my mistakes. I want you to see that you can make these mistakes, and but you can fix them. I'll show you how to fix this. I need to tie this sky color into the foreground here, and I didn't do that. I should have done that around here somewhere. Uh, but what I'm going to do is put a blank layer above here. I'm going to sample this color. Make sure you have your brush tool selected. Type B for brush. Option click one of these colors up in the sky here, like maybe right around in here. And what we're going to do is type shift delete on our keyboard and we're going to that brings up the field dialog box we're going to uh, contents there's a drop down here and you have all these different options but we want the foreground color i want to fill it with the foreground color click ok and that puts that color of the entire image and then just come to your blend mode and we're going to come down here to either overlay or soft light i'm going to do soft light and what we'll do is take the opacity, pull it the whole way off, and then just uh, slowly just build it up a little bit. Just to add that little bit of color tone over the entire image here. Okay. Maybe something like that would be good. And the other thing I can do is come and take this, see this layer mask right here? Option click this and drag it up onto this layer and that'll apply it only to the foreground. Okay, so let's shift click this layer mask. Okay, as you can see it takes it off, it takes it off the sky here. And it just throws it on the foreground here a little bit. And let me just play with this opacity a little bit more. I just want to put a little bit of that color onto the foreground just to tie this whole image together. And now we're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I upload a new training video, you'll be notified about it. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy 